Hi, this is Pete Mandick. I'm professor of philosophy at William Patterson University in New Jersey, and this is a brief video presentation giving a really quick overview of my paper, Conscious State Anti-Realism, presented in the fourth annual online consciousness conference. So the, um, the basic thing that I'm arguing for is a kind of anti-realism about conscious states. This anti-realism might be thought of as a kind of idealism. It says something like a, um, a state's being conscious, like for example, the conscious perception of the visual image on the screen that you're looking at right now. Uh, it's, it's consciousness, the state's being conscious is fully exhausted by one's thought to the effect that they are in such a conscious state. So um, another way of putting it is that the state isn't conscious independently of the thought. The state has no independent existence or there's no fact of the matter about whether the state is conscious or not independent of the thought about it. So a lot of what I talk about in the paper concerns the best way of interpreting what's going on in the very famous higher order thought theory of consciousness developed and defended by people such as David Rosenthal and um, also defended by Josh Weisberg. Uh, part of the reason why I single out Rosenthal and Weisberg is because they have been pretty um, firm in defending realist views or realist readings of the higher order thought theory of consciousness. And you might wonder, well, you know, what, uh, what's the big deal about the higher order thought theory of consciousness with respect to something like a realism or anti-realism debate about conscious states? And, uh, well, one way of putting the big deal goes something like this. If you think about uh, what happens in cases in which higher order thoughts are false, so one has a higher order thought to the effect that one is in a um, first order state that in actuality one is not, what's going on there consciousness-wise? And one very plausible thing to say about what's going on there consciousness wise is what it's like to be you is well whatever the higher order thought says. So if the higher order thought says you saw some circles move where the reality of the situation with respect to your first order of mental states is that there were no first order representations of circles moving, then what it's like to be you is as if you consciously saw some circles moving. So the higher order thought fully determines the content of your consciousness, it fully determines what is going on with respect to you vis-a-vis -vis consciousness. So uh, one thing that you might think is that, uh, well, huh, the, um, the conscious states don't really have any independent existence. They don't have any existence independent of the thoughts about them. They don't have any status qua conscious independent of certain thoughts about them. And see, so that would seem to support a kind of anti-realism about conscious states. But another thing that you might think about um, the higher order thought theory is that these, uh, these states about which the higher order thoughts are thoughts, <laughs> the higher order thoughts are, are about certain states, uh, and those states are there independently of being thought about. And so that kind of independence claim sounds like a realism claim, a claim toward realism. And uh, so what, uh, what is the issue? Well, as I try to put it in the paper, the issue can be put in terms of whether it's better to read the higher thought theory of consciousness um, on a relational reading or a non-relational reading. What does it mean to read it in the, one of these uh, two different ways? On a relational reading, the, what, the, the way to understand a state being conscious is in terms of a relation between a state and the higher order thought that it's about. So um, this, is, this kind of relational view is something that really becomes uh, clear if we think about cases in which there is a state which is initially unconscious, some unconscious first order state, and at some later time it becomes conscious 
Now you might ask, on the higher thought theory, what is it that made this state go from being an unconscious state, from being a non-conscious state? And the answer seems to be that there's this other state, which is the higher thought about the first state. So we've got two different states, and you might think that where you've got two different things, there might be some relation between them. So in this case, we've got this first thing, which is the first order state. It goes from being unconscious to being conscious in virtue of there being some high order state about it. So we've got candidates for relata in a two-place relation. And what is the two-place relation, if this is going to be a relational reading? Well, the two-place relation looks like something like the aboutness relation or the representation relation. The relation is that the high order thought is about that first order state. And in virtue of bearing that relation to the first order state, the first order state becomes conscious. So there you go. There is a relational reading of what's going on in the higher thought theory of consciousness, at least with, with respect to some states and how those states become conscious. But then you might wonder about what about these other sorts of situations, situations in which the higher thought is false and perhaps even uh, false because the higher order state that it seems to be about doesn't exist at all. So um, you might think that uh, the higher order thought, even in these empty cases, these empty higher order thought cases, is about something. It's, um, you know, it's got aboutness, it's got representational content, whatever that amounts to. But if it's about something that doesn't exist, and you make the plausible assumption that relations have to be between relata that exist, then you might think that, well, okay, uh, it's starting to look like maybe um, a higher order thoughts being about something is not a relation because it's being about something is, you know, it's got something to do with this intentionality phenomenon and perhaps intentionality is not a relation. If relations can only be born to existing relata and we can think about things that don't exist, then that might push you in the direction of thinking that thinking about or representing is not a relation. And regardless of what you think about the general issues about the relationality of intentionality, at least in this specific case concerning consciousness, you might think that uh, whatever the higher thought is doing in these um, empty higher thought cases, what it's doing is non-relational in the sense that it's not a relation to some actual first order state, that what suffices for whatever consciousness you are in or whatever conscious state that you're in is simply the higher order thought itself. So if the higher order thought is empty, if the higher order thought has the content that you have a first order perception of some motion and there actually is no first order state, which is a perception of motion, that what it's like to be you is as if you did perceive some motion. So the higher order thought by itself suffices for you to be conscious and why not just say you therefore are in a conscious state in virtue of the higher thought. <clears throat> yeah, and so if in, if in the empty higher thought case you are conscious solely in virtue of what's going on with the higher thought, if the higher thought itself suffices for you to be in a conscious state, then what's the right thing to say about the earlier case, the case that seemed to support the relational reading, um, in which, you know, there's two states, there's the, the existing state and the higher order, the existing first order state and the higher order thought that's about it. Um, well, given what was said about the empty case, you might be inclined to think that even in the non-empty case, the first order state is irrelevant. The so-called first order state um, given that there is no such thing as a representation relation or an intentionality relation, that the, uh, the first order state is irrelevant for consciousness, that the higher order state itself suffices for you to be in, conscious, in a conscious state, regardless of whether it's an empty higher order thought or not. And why not then say 
that you are an anti-realist about consciousness or about conscious states. So that's the main flavor of what the talk is about or what the paper is about. There, I guess now is not actually a talk. There's just this super brief synopsis. But anyway, I hope you uh, are interested in this enough to read the whole paper. And I look forward to the various comments and discussion that show up in the comment thread on Consciousness Online. Thanks very much.